Welcome witches and wizards to our class of magic today. I will be showing you several magic tricks that you can do with your magic wands and a few special words and we'll just be practicing today. So the first one we're going to be practicing is one that you all know quite well. It involves a swish and a flick and it is the one of Wingardium Leviosa. Now when I really cast this you're going to notice that these beads are going to come out of this cup and as they come up they will in fact start to rise higher and higher as they start to fly up so let's practice our wingardian leviosa ready wingardian leviosa notice how it is flying up above the cup as it falls out Okay, so you know that's not really magic, right? We definitely have some science principles behind this. The main one is inertia. We are going to use gravity to give us a little bit of potential energy to make it do that jumpy thing. So when I fling this, woo, it starts going higher and higher because the potential energy is turning into kinetic energy and giving it a little bit of jump. So kind of magical, but not real magic. We are going to now practice our ASIO spell, which if you do correctly, should be smooth and effortless. If you do it correctly, you should be able to bring the ring to you and leave the nut in place, and so it will drop directly into the jar below it. Ready? ASIO ring. Okay guys, so this is our good friend Inertia again. Here's the ring she had but I think your professor cheated a little bit and put a string on the end to yank it towards her. The principles of science are still the same. If we line it up with our steady hands, that nut is directly over the top of this. So if I'm able to pull this fast enough, that nut should drop straight into that bottle. For this next spell, we are going to turn this green blob into something that is red. We are going to use the spell Prismatius. Ready? Pris now we simply have to stretch it out and you will see that it has turned almost red in color. Okay guys, so this again is just science. So I have my fluorescein dye in here and that's gonna help make it that see-through color. I also have my sodium tetraborate which is the cross-linker solution that's going to help adhere all of those things so we can turn this into a non-Newtonian substance. So I'm gonna add it into there. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Let's get it going really good. It will dye my fingers a little, so I'm gonna wear my gloves when I pull it out. There we go. So with this, if it stretches out a little bit, if I send light through the back, you should be able to see the red compound. If I do it from the front, it looks super green. So this is just the way that the dyes are pulling through. It's a phosphor type dye, so it'll help reflect that green off, but because it has the fluorescein in it, it'll show that red, so it's gonna absorb all the light in the colors, except for red, which is what it's showing you right now. For our next spell, we are going to be practicing a modified version of the petrifying cell, so Petrificus totalis. Now you've heard of that one, but we're not going to be petrifying people today. That's not how we use the spell. We are going to instead be petrifying water. You may ask what that means, and I will show you exactly what that means. First, we're gonna pour some water into our jar here. And then I'm going to cast it on this card here, ready? I'm gonna cast it on this card which will then transfer it into my water. Are you ready? Petrificus totalis. Now this card will power, will petrify our water. So I'm gonna hold it like this. We'll give it just a few seconds. It takes a little bit before it'll start to work. And now I can simply remove that card and the water stays in my jar because we have petrified it and it's pretty easy to end it too we can just end our cast the water is unpetrified okay so for this next one this deals with surface tension 
So what we do for this magic is we're going to pour the water into this mason jar like she did. And I'm going to do the same thing. I have my card. I'm going to flip things around. I can hold the card like this so it doesn't move. And then when I do this, I can do the same thing. There's a couple of things going on. First off, this isn't just an open mason jar. You can see I have my lid on, and once I turn it, the water is going to dip out. It does that because I have a screen on it. This does a couple of things. First off, it allows the water molecule, molecules to tie onto themselves in cohesion, and it lets the water molecule, molecules, it's a hard word to say, kids, it lets the water molecules adhere to the screen itself, creating a block and some surface tension so it stays under until the force pulls it out. Our next spell we are going to practice is Evanesco. Now, Evanesco makes things disappear. And since we are using water, we'll just continue to use water. And I'm going to make the water disappear. So I'm going to just pour it into our cup. And we won't use too much yet. And then we are going to cast the spell Evanesco. And when this works, the water in our cup should disappear. Practice carefully. We want to make sure not to disappear the cup instead of the water. Ready? Evanesco. Now, if that has worked, the water should be completely gone. Okay, so one more time. Not real magic, but it is really cool. So what we can do for this one is this is actually a powder we use. It kind of looks like snow when it goes in, but what's really cool about it is it is a super absorbent polymer. So what that means is when we add water, it adheres to itself and it creates this gel so when you flip it, the water doesn't come out. But there is definitely still something in the cup. It just kind of looks like this. This is the same sort of stuff you're going to find in diapers. So, you know, babies will go in there, it creates this little gelatin thing in there. But what's really magic about this super absorbent polymer is it can grow to about 100 times its size. For our next spell that we are practicing today, it is a spell of making things slippery. I'm going to make this slippery enough that I can pull it out from underneath these dishes without it breaking them. The spell we are using for this is Slipperious. Ready? We will cast it. Slipperious. And now, I should be able to pull it out without any problem. Okay, so again, it's like a magic trick, but not, you know, real magic. There is some science at work here. We're going back to inertia, and in this case, the first law of motion, which goes, an object in motion tends to stay at motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless there's an external force. In this case, our external force is friction. If there's any kind of friction, these plates are going to move with the tablecloth. But here is the secret to this magic trick. If you have confidence and no edge on your tablecloth and a really hard, fast pulling motion down, you should be able to pull out the tablecloth yourself. For the next spell that we are going to be practicing today, we are going to be practicing a sticking charm. So we are going to stick this cup of water onto our board. And if we do it right, that should keep the board, should keep the cup of water on the board and keep it from flying off, no matter what I do to it. So our spell is adhesiosis. Now, if that has worked the right way and our magic has gone the right way, then we should be able to spin this around without it falling off of our board. I can do it several times and it will remain on the board. Okay, so obviously the science behind this one is there's centripetal force. So when you go on a merry-go-round or when you turn the corner too fast in a car, you might feel that force pulling against you. So this is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Basically, the force of gravity won't pull the cup down as long as we're accelerating it fast enough in that circular motion. So if I go in a big circle, the force is keeping it to that plate. It's not a sticking charm. 
it's just science. <laughs> For our final spell today, and I know that you've seen some science so that the muggles can join us in our magic, but for our final one, I think I have something that the muggles may not be able to do. I have here just a regular straw. I'm going to go ahead and put it inside our bag. And then I'm going to cast on it Engorgio. If you remember, Engorgio makes things grow bigger. So when I cast it, this straw will get much, much bigger. Are you ready? In Gorgio. Let's see what happens. <laughs> See you next time, students. Um, maybe she knows a little bit of magic. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, guys.